Good evening, sir. My name is Rahul Gonkar, and I'm a Zosa student. I just need to ask you, in the Islamic religion, why the Shias Muslim people are given less importance compared to other Muslims? I have also heard one of my Muslim friends that they are not even allowed to drink water from a Shia family. Not even a water, okay? Means, I just need to ask, means, uh, it is also said that means in Iraq there was a Saddam Hussein has done, he has spread a chemical gas, he has done a cruelism on Shias people as compared to Hitler has done on Jewish people in the Second World War. So don't you think it's an injustice? I also need to know that means what exactly the Shias people has done a mistake in the Islamic religion before. So means still they're suffering right now these days. The brother asked the question that why are Shias considered inferior and what mistake they have done? Why Saddam Hussein killed them like Hitler has killed Germany with chemical weapons, etc. Brother, in Islam there is no Shia Sunni. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam. I'll give the answer. I'll give the answer. I'll give the answer and then you are most welcome. In Islam there is no Shia Sunni. What Quran says in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 103, Wa tasimu bi hablillahi jamiya wala tafarraku. Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. We have to hold to the rope of Allah, the Quran, and the teachings of the Prophet, the Sahih Hadith. If you hold to them, then you are a true Muslim. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sect in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after the affairs on the day of judgment. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that there will be 73 sects in Muslim. Out of that, only one will go to Jannah. The Sahabas asked, which one? Those who follow me and my Sahabas. Those who follow Quran and the authentic teachings of the Prophet. So, the Quran says, don't make sects. A Prophet said, even though the Quran says, there will be some people who will make sects. How many? 73. The one who will be on the true part is one who doesn't make sex. So anyone who calls himself anything besides Muslims, the word is Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits the will to God. What was the prophet? Was he Shia? Was he Sunni? What was he? He was Muslim. And the answer I gave to the earlier sister of Sulay al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, it says, Fakulu shadu bianna muslimun. We bear witness that we are Muslim. If you want to judge whether the Muslim is right or wrong, what you do, you check with the Quran. Let him call himself Muhammad, Zakir, Sultan, Abdullah, no problem. You check it up if he's following the Quran and the authentic teachings of the Prophet. Bukhari, Muslim, authentic teaching, he's a true Muslim. If he goes against the true teachings of the Prophet, the Sahih Hadith of Bukhari, Muslim, and all the other Sahih Hadith, and goes against the Quran, he's not a true Muslim. A true Muslim is a person who follows the Quran and the authentic teachings of the Prophet Muhammad So when you come to know, let him call himself anything. If he does not follow the Quran and does not follow the authentic teachings of the Prophet, he is not a true Muslim. Regarding the second part of the question, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein is not in the question. It is in the question, no? Ah. Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein killed Shias. Brother, I don't know whether he killed Shias or not. The media says, but... Whether it be Saddam Hussein, whether it be Hitler, whether it be George Bush. Anyone kills any innocent human being. Leave aside Shia Sunni, even if he kills innocent Hindu, innocent Christian, innocent Jew, it is a big crime. Let it be Saddam Hussein, let it be George Bush, let it be Hitler. Anyone who kills any innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, whether it be Hindu, whether it be Christian, whether it be Jew, anyone kills any other innocent human being. If he's done it, it's a sin, it is prohibited. I am not here to protect anyone. Let his name be anything. George Bush, Hitler, Sultan, Abdullah, Tom, Dick, Harry, anyone. If anyone kills any innocent human being, it is prohibited. Hope that answers the question. Sir, it means you want to say that we should not believe in this Shias, Sunnis, or Bori Muslims, sir? I am not saying that. Quran, there is no Shia Sunni in the Quran. Means so, there are no so many the Quran. Are there, so, so many majids. That's what you tell them. You ask them, where is the word Shia mentioned in the Quran? Ask him where is Bori mentioned in the Quran. Sir, it is a, it's a, my college is there in Bandra, sir. I'm studying. In so the these people are not following. What you have to do, ask them. 
Are they following the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are they following the teachings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 159 Anyone who makes sex division in Islam, you have nothing to do with him. Anyone who divides the religion of Islam, it is prohibited. So if you have to be a good Muslim, you have to hold to the rope of Allah, that is the Quran. So just by calling someone Abdullah, Sultan, whatever it is, will not take you to Jannah, but following the teachings of the Creator Almighty God and following the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace. Brother, I would like to ask you a question. Yes. I have a question. You are so much bothered about Shia Sunni. I want to ask you why. Sir, there are so many my friends. No, no. There. Do you want to join Islam and then you're thinking what to take? So, I mean, I'm sir, asking you the question. Yeah, I mean, sir, Do you want to come to Islam and you're thinking, should you join Shia or Sunni? Sir, no. I'm, no. I mean, there are so many, sir, there are so many religions are there. I mean, in Islam, there are so many sections of religion. There's no there. section in Islam. Uh -huh. Islam, there is only one Muslim. Whoever told you uh -huh. did not tell you what Quran says. I'm giving you reference. So the person is told me she, he was a Sunni, he told me that... Let him be Sunni, let him be Shia, let him be Bori, anyone. Uh -huh. Tell him Quran says don't make sex. Chapter number 6, write it down. It means this Chapter is all number absurd. Six. So it means this is all absurd. He is not following Quran. Quran says Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 159. Note it down. The Dr. Zakir Naik said Surah Anam chapter 6 verse number 159. That don't make sex. What you have to do is you have to submit your will to God. Now I want to know, brother, do you want to submit your will to God? Brother, uh -huh. do you want to submit your will to God? Sir, I respect Islam, sir. I believe in Islam. No, no, yeah. fine. You respect Islam. Do you believe there's one God? Uh huh. Do you believe there's one God? Yes, sir. I believe in God. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? Uh huh. Do you believe that God has got no idols? God has no idol. Do you believe that? I don't know, sir. Do you believe in idol worship? Uh huh. Do you believe in idol worship? Yeah. Idol worship is right or wrong? It means to God. No. Do you believe that worshipping an idol is right or wrong? Yes. It is right or is it wrong? It's right, sir. Doing idol worship. But that's against your Vedas. Your Veda says you should not worship anyone but one God. It's mentioned in your Yajur Ved, chapter 32, verse number 3. Sveta says Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. Na tasir patima asti. Of that God, there is no pratima, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no idol, there is no sculpture, there is no statue. I'm asking you a question. When your Veda says God has got no image, no statue, no idol, do you yet believe in idol worship? Yes, sir. So leave us at Shia Sunni, I'm asking you. Are you following your Veda? Yes, sir. Are you following or not? Are you following? Sir, because I'm from that religion, sir. Correct. So, so I'm talking about... It is not my mistake, sir. I'm born in that religion, sir. If you are brought up in that religion, I'm asking you, isn't your duty to study? That's your why Veda... I'm researching on this subject. Sir. Therefore, I'm asking you, brother, that in your scripture Veda, Yajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, Sveta Sveta Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, it says, Na Tasir Patima Asti. It's a Sanskrit quotation, which means Almighty God has got no Pratima, no image. No photograph, no painting, no sculpture, no idol, no statue. If your scripture says, Almighty God has got no idol, then doing idol worship is right or wrong? Right or wrong? Such a big person to decide this, that it's a right or wrong. No, but if your scripture is saying, God has got no image, no photograph, no idol, no statue, then making a statue of God is right or wrong? So, my, my previous person, means my Purvaj has done this, so... So I cannot blame on them, sir. Sorry? My Puraj, my previous, the, the Hinduism people has done this, so I cannot blame on them. I'm not asking Hindu people. Hindu. I'm asking you the question, your scripture, which is the most authentic scripture in your religion? You don't know. What, Do you sir? know? Which is the highest scripture in your religion? So, I'm It is Vedas. Yeah, Vedas. Therefore, you see my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Hinduism, and I request one of the volunteers, to give him my DVD, similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Watch that DVD. If you have queries, you can meet me, and inshallah, I'll clarify your doubt. And then I would request you read that, understand, and find the two pieces. Sir, and the last thing I just need to ask you that it means we have to not believe in this that there are so many sections of Islam that Sunnis, Shias, we should not believe. We should only believe in Quran, right? Quran and the authentic sayings of Prophet. That's it. 
Any scholar says anything. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 59, Atiullah, Atiur Rasul, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And continues, and those who have been given the authority for command, those who have charged with affairs, that means you have to follow Allah, Almighty God, his messengers, and those who are knowledgeable. But the verse does not stop there. It says, if they differ, if the people of knowledge differ, go back to Allah and his Rasul. If someone tells you something, you verify from the Quran and the authentic hadith whether it's right or wrong. Just because any scholar says anything, it carries no weight in Islam. So that Our thing is Allah, Almighty God, and the Messenger. If any scholar says something, if it matches with Quran and Sahih Hadith, you accept it. If it is against Quran Hadith, you reject it. So Just by person saying he's a Muslim, you have to tell him, Pull hatu burhanakum, produce your proof in Kundum Sadiqin, but if you're truthful. That's the reason. Whenever I give answer, I give you references from the Quran and Sai Hadith. What I'm saying, what Dr. Zakir Naik says, is zero in Islam. It carries no value. What I say in Islam is zero. Nil. What Quran says, what Almighty God says, what our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that carries weight. So what I'm giving, I'm giving references. Person who does not know, I am giving references. My answer is based on this teaching of the Quran, these verses. My answer is based on this teaching of the Prophet, Sai Bukhari, Wam number so and so, etc., to give proof. So, what they say carries weight, what I say carries no weight. Hope that answers the question.